All right, guys. So I'm gonna show you guys this video right here, and it's basically like a, um, it's kind of the same thing that I've been telling you guys. That's why I haven't been posting any videos lately because I've been waiting for like big news. But I'm gonna go ahead and update you guys on what's going on, and I brought this video to help us out understand what's going on over there. Check it out. Bags of rubbish are piling up as the camp turns into a cesspit where six thousand people are sleeping rough. The military is handing out plates of food twice a day. Paid for by Tijuana's city council and charity groups. Of course. Most of these men ran out of money long ago. The United Nations says there's never been a migrant caravan in Mexico hey, what up, Cholo? like this one. So far, 3,800 uh, of the members of the caravan are asylum in all Mexico. I just wanted to go ahead and say, like, she sounds like she's relative to Arnold Schwarzenegger High in the Terminator movie. <laughs> okay, let's keep going, let's keep going. Plus, we have the people that they're asking to return back. And plus, there are people that are still thinking. She even said back, like Charles Schwarzenegger. Huh? <laughs> in order to follow up with this American dream or not. Anna Leva just called her mum. She left El Salvador with the dream of getting a job in the United States to send money home to her grandchildren. Oh, poor lady, bro. I really appreciate it. See, like that lady has more of a life right here in Mexicali or in Mexico, period, than over the United States, man. It's just what I what I try to tell you guys sometimes, like if they go over there and you guys know this, like if they go over there, like what are they gonna be able to offer to the to the community, you know, besides, you know, working time. Like I'm saying I'm by working time I mean like, oh well maybe they could clean your house, you know, uh, gardening, um uh, sh sh small shit like that, you know what I mean? Small shit like that, but it's full out there, bro. It's it's full out there. Like every everywhere. All right, you guys know that it's full. Jobs out there, it's very scarce. So let's just keep with the video. What those people are doing for us, letting us call home, even though we have only three minutes to speak with our families. Listening to their voice is enough to humble our hearts, and also they know we are safe. So she just said something very key right there. Listening to her, listening to their family humbles their herds, so they're being calmed down. You know what I'm saying? You know you don't even know if these people haven't talked to their families in weeks, and they're fine. Well, I don't, I'm not I'm not gonna say that they're finally getting a chance to talk to their family because they they have phones and who knows maybe they talk to to them by their phones. But what I am trying to say is that these people they they came up here violently. And once they got here, of course, that um, that momentum of, you know what, let's jump the border, let's go illegally, of course, it was just in their group still. It got fired up. The idea got back up to, back up to life. And they tried, they tried it. You know what I mean? They tried it. It didn't work out. A lot of them see what's going on. A lot of them see that they're going to get shot. They don't want to get shot. They don't want tear gas. They don't want to go. They don't want to put their family, their kids through that bullshit. So they're done. People are getting humbled. Well, they're being humbled by their families. And well, nothing humbles somebody more than family. You know what I mean? If they start hearing them, like, you know what? They're going to think of other ways to do it, which they are. You know, 3,800, that lady just said, 3,800 are looking for asylum here in Mexico. Some of them are leaving voluntarily. And some of them still do plan to, um, to um, uh, jump the border illegally. But if you think about those people that are planning to jump the border illegally, you could tell that those people have shit in their brains, you know, they're not going to pass, they're not, so, okay, let's just, let's just stay with the video again, I just wanted to give you my idea on that. There is barely any room left in this camp, we've seen people sick and vomiting, open air showers, and everyone here is sleeping on the ground. The problem is, this situation isn't temporary, there's no long term plan mm -hmm. to deal with the thousands of people exactly. in Tijuana, and the many more thousands who are still expected to come. Exactly, exactly. So, <clears throat> sorry about that. I'm sorry, you guys really don't like it when I when I show my sickness in the videos. But what I was going to tell you guys right now is that Trump is going to reinforce the border more than it is already right now, because he's he he's waiting for those uh those other people that are going to come up with the same mentality as these people. You know, they try to they come up here and they oh you know what well we're all together let's just jump the border now. So that mentality is going to try to try to get in here, you know what I mean, it's, it's, so there might be another, another rush, but I really, I really don't think so, what I'm just saying right now is that Mexico on their side, they're already extending their hands to their full limits to these guys so they could go home legally, and, uh, 
go to work here legally, get their identification cards, all that shit, you know what I mean? So they're 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 they're, they're getting taken care of on the Mexican side. They just don't want it. They want to go to America. So all those people that do want to go to America, well they're just gonna waste their time and they're gonna fucking they're gonna be uh, miserable for, for longer than the people that are asking for asylum because the people who are asking for asylum are obviously gonna get a chance to work and make money, fund themselves. So yeah. He's in charge of migrants in Tijuana. He says the city council has no strategy to cope. This shelter was planned for 1,000 people. We have adapted it to 2,000, but now there are 6,000. So the conditions oh my God. have gone downhill. It's become very difficult to keep the area clean because the migrants are not helping. We have a lot of volunteers, but it's not enough. They are still surrounded by garbage. Mm -mm. Remember when, I to remember when I showed you guys that video where uh, store owners from San uh, from Tijuana, you know, attacked that one kid? Dude, th there's trash all over stores. Doors, those store owners are obviously going to try to do something to these people, man. <laughs> That's how shit goes down. He even said it. The migrants don't even do nothing to clean up after themselves, bro. You know what I mean? They're dirty, dude. Donald Trump. Look at him. Yeah, bro, go back home. But this feels mad too. People forced to make beds out of cardboard. That's what the shower, That's what they want. Oh my god, that's what they want. Then there are the children. Oh no. Two thousand of them. Dangerous caravan of invaders. I know, mom is one. TRT world. Damn, so obviously those those that ending right there, obviously it's it's meant to touch people's heart. And it does touch mine. Honestly, honestly, it does touch mine because I come to the same thing that I always say, like those kids have nothing to do with this bullshit that they're going through, right? Those families, those parents, they could easily ask for asylum right here in Mexico. And having a family, Mexico will help them way more than those single fuckers out there. You know what I'm saying? So this this video, it's it's good. I like how he gave us some information. I I, I, I want to know what you guys think about this. All right, I'm I'm, I'm gonna start making another video right now. Just just be patient. I got you guys. I got you guys.